Welcome to another Sentry Show and Tell. Jonas is a Sentry engineer who works on our upcoming profiling tool, and today he's giving us an update on where profiling is at. This feature is currently in alpha, but will hopefully go into public beta in September. Check out our previous profiling demos, linked in the description. Hello everyone, this is Jonas from the profiling team. I'll be giving you a quick update on what are all the things that have changed with profiling since the last time we gave a show and tell. So, as some of you may or may not know, profiling is going to be entering public beta starting September. Uh, and so with that, the team has been mostly focused on re-envisioning the workflow, how people are going to be using profiling, you know, what's going to be like the user flow of actually using the product, right? Um, and with that, one of the largest changes uh, to, to the actual flow has been that we've replaced the large scatter chart that used to exist on this page. And the reason for that is that scatter charts don't really scale well once you have a lot of data. Um, you start seeing a lot of small little dots across the screen, and it's just very hard to pick out uh, outliers or spot regressions or anything like that. So instead, we've replaced it by two little charts, one that shows you the profiles by count, and the other one shows you the percentiles. Um, Below what used to be a list of all your profiles is now a list of transactions. So you get a higher level overview um, of transactions instead of seeing like just a massive list of profiles that just keep coming in. So this allows you to isolate all the profiles on a single uh, transaction. So for instance, uh, here I can just go to main activity and I can see that these are some of the recent profiles that have been coming in, but I also have a list of suspect functions. Um, for instance, uh, main activity on create, this seems to be something that's you know sometimes taking a lot of time. So from here, I can now easily go to the actual function in the, in the chart itself. And you can see that as I open the page, it immediately highlighted the function, which means I can immediately start to investigate what has happened. So this is sort of the new flow uh, that we envision for users to, to use. But there's also a lot of small little changes that we've done uh, to, the, to the flame chart itself so that users can use it uh, more effectively. For instance, we've, we've improved search. Um, we now have highlighting. Um, and it's much easier to see. Before, we would just color the whole frame per, uh, orange. And it was just a little bit of a mess. Um, we allow you to view a list of bottom-up frames now. So those of you more familiar with performance uh, profiling, this is a common view where you're trying to optimize. Um, we're trying to find like slow uh, running function, slow ru running leaf functions, and now you can do that. Uh, if you click on a subtree of the chart, it'll isolate that to a specific subtree. So here you can see that it showed us the leaf, which is the index of method. Um, if you just click away, it'll give you the list of the whole tree. You can filter that by having only application frames or only seeing system frames, um, as well as some little things to collapse recursion. Uh, you, can, you can use a modifier key, a uh, command key on macOS to expand and collapse entire parts of a subtree. Uh, you can now export your profile to the raw data that was actually uploaded, which can be good for debugging and help you like see what's actually happening in case uh, you're not really sure of the data. Uh, there are small little options as being able to move um, move the layout. You, know, you can move the table to the left, you can move it to the right, uh, whatever you prefer. A uh, small little new option that we just introduced uh, yesterday is to be able to color the flame chart by frequency, which allows you to easily see frames that are being called very often. And that's usually something that you can optimize either you know, by using caching or whatever you want to do. Um, and there are smaller options as well as to be able to highlight all occurrences of a frame so you can easily see exactly where it's being executed. Um, that's like here. That's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you will be playing around with the charts, we would love to have your feedback. Thank you very much.